this is crazy. Not that it's anything new for the Las Vegas Raiders, but they broke new ground by hiring the first black female to be the team's president, and some people are crapping on them about it already. They're saying the Raiders only hired Sandra Douglas Morgan because of the accusations Dan Ventrell made on owner Mark Davis for creating a toxic workplace environment. Are there really people still out there that believe that? For those that do, I have some beachfront property in Las Vegas I want to sell you. Huh. I understand that's still a thing and there's still an impending investigation going on, but that was something Mark Davis really didn't have anything to do with. You don't need me to show you again, do you? Let's go to that article in the New York Times, second paragraph. It says in interviews with the New York Times, more than a dozen former employees, some of whom spoke on the condition of anonymity because they signed agreements with the team prohibiting them from discussing their employee publicly, described numerous problems, large and small. There were, they said, lax controls over how money was spent and how people were paid, and even the bungling of payment of its taxes over several years. Not long after its move, the team missed a payment for the electric bill in its temporary office, forcing the lights to be shut off. Somebody ain't doing something right. Somebody ain't doing a whole lot of things right. But if you're an employee there, you can't complain. We're in the second paragraph and it says, If anyone complained, they were let go, said Nicole Adams, who worked in the Human Resources Department for almost five years. She was pushed out in 2020 and declined to sign a severance agreement that she said would have prevented her from speaking on her tenure with the team. She said that Ventrell, then the team's general counsel, joked that he would be ready to settle if anyone came forward with a charge. From what we just read, we could see that Ventrell, the guy that's throwing all the accusations around, is the one that was doing all the wrong in the organization. Let's go back to the New York Times article to show you that Davis didn't have anything to do with it. This time we're going to start with the first paragraph. It says, Mark Davis, the son of Al Davis, is now the team's principal owner. In the years before he took the bold step of moving the team to Las Vegas, he was mostly hands-off and left day-to-day -day running of the club to trusted lieutenants. They included Mark Bedain, the longtime president who had been close to the Davis family for decades. Several former employees who spoke to the Times said that Davis was rarely seen around the office. There was little oversight of expenses, employees said, and money was often dispersed without a clear accounting of where it was going. So you can see Davis was the one getting victimized here because he was hardly seen in the building until recently and next thing you know, people are resigning and getting fired. Isn't that what happens when owners see their top level employees doing wrong? It's funny how Ventrell said Davis was dismissive about the workplace environment. That makes no sense at all for Davis to be dismissive or for Ventrell to even speak with them about it. That's Ventrell's job to keep things tidy in the building. After all, he's the one in that building every day. He's the president. How many lower level employees do you see talking to owners of corporations? There's this thing called the chain of command. Ventrell's been caught already. It was he that made people sign non-disclosure agreements. It was he that said he would be ready to settle and give away severance pay. So he definitely caused a toxic workplace environment. And from all witness accounts, Davis didn't notice any of this until recently. And soon after he noticed, Bredain resigned and Ventrell was promoted to interim president. But it didn't take long for Davis to find out that he was a big part of the problem too, so he fired him. So in turn, he accused Davis of creating the toxic work environment he created and firing him as revenge for him bringing it to his attention. Come on. The quote unquote financial irregularities are enough on their own. Let's realize what he's up against here too. For those that don't know, when Davis's mom Carol Davis dies, Davis has to pay an estate tax. Estate tax is 40% when it's $11 million or over and Forbes lists the Raiders worth at $3.41 billion. Davis actually owns 47% of that, so from the time that death happens, Davis has 9 months to pay $641 million and he's only worth $500 million right now. So Davis needs large profits and for his mom to live a little longer. That's why he hired Morgan, to see those profits. He doesn't need his revenue to be handled loosely. If this article is accurate, and I believe it is, Davis is cleared of any wrongdoing. He was hardly ever in the office when he first took over the Raiders. It wasn't until they got to Vegas that he really started to check in on things. 
and it can't be a coincidence that the team president resigned and the interim that replaced him was fired shortly thereafter. So the sequence goes, the Raiders get to Vegas, Davis starts to check in more, and now his presidents are gone. So he hired a new president to get his affairs in order, not as a ploy to cover anything up. That's ridiculous. Thank you very much for watching. See you next time.